Today I'm checking all the lights on Casper. I've been around the car and I found only one problem. It's up in the right front there. I'll go ahead and show it to you now, but you can see I've got a low beam on that right side that's not working. The fog lights are working okay, and the turn signals are working okay on the markers, but uh, that low beam headlight on that right side is going to have to be replaced. I'm sure some of you are thinking, well, yeah, let's just get a new headlight but not so fast, okay? Let me explain. If this should happen to you with your old Benz, before you order up a new headlight bulb, you need to go check the fuses. A lot of people are not aware that on a lot of these early Mercedes, Mercedes Benz fused the high and low beams separately on different fuses, including right and left side. So if I'm looking here at the fuse chart, look at that, number 11 is high beam left, Number 12 is high beam right. Number 13 is low beam left. And number 14 is low beam right. So in other words, there's four fuses for those headlights. So you wanna check the fuse first. This could be a bad fuse, a bad number 14 fuse. So let's take a close look at that one right now. Once you get the cover off, you can look for corresponding numbers usually at the top or the bottom ends of the fuse holders. But you're going to need to get a light because they're kind of hard to read. So coming across the bottom here, I'm seeing 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So number 14 is this one right here. And sure enough, it's one of those old original aluminum type fuses that I detest because of the problem of dissimilar metal corrosion. If you look right here, I can see corrosion coming out of the tip here. And this fuse is kind of warped. Sometimes that means it has been overheated. Sometimes when they overheat, the corrosion will increase on the tips. So I'm gonna pull this fuse out. In fact, I'm looking at over half of these are the old aluminum type fuses. There's a couple of the copper brass alloy that have been replaced, this one right here in particular. But I'm gonna pull out my fuse kit and my special tool and while I'm playing around with number 14 here, I'm just going to replace all these fuses. This is one of the best electrical preventative measures you can do on these older Mercedes-Benz. When you're replacing your fuses in your old fuse box, you'll have three colors of fuses to deal with. You'll have white, red, and blue. You do not want to go by what is in the fuse box. Somebody could have installed the incorrect fuse in the past so don't just copy the pattern that you see here. I'm going to look at this fuse guide here, and if you look along this side, you'll see little indicators like the round circle that's open is red, the little square box is a white fuse, and then the solid circle is a blue fuse. So only one blue fuse in this W116, that's number six for the cigar lighter in the heated rear window. So the heated rear window pulls a lot of amps, and that's why they're using a 25 amp blue fuse. The red fuses are 16 amps, and the white fuses are like number 14 is a white fuse. So I'm gonna start pulling the fuses now. You can see I've already got all my new fuses here. Here's the tool I developed to remove and replace the fuses. If you've ever done this before, you know how frustrating it is. <laughs> so having this tool makes the job go a lot easier. I've also got a brass brush here. You wanna use brass, you don't wanna scratch the holders, but you do wanna clean off any little residue of corrosion that's left once I pull the fuses out. So let me show you now how this little tool works. I'm gonna start out and just remove a uh, number 14 so we can get a closer look at it. I'll just grab a hold of it here like this. I just have to pull back on it and lift it out. And sure enough, I can see the corrosion there on this end. In fact, if I pull this one out, this is one that's been sitting in the car as a backup. That's what these holes are for up here is having spares inside the fuse box. The tips are corroded. They've lost their sheen. So just Using aluminum fuses in my book is an absolute no-no. You can see where this is kind of warped. You have to look very closely. Sometimes these will crack. 
and you won't see the crack until you remove it from the holder and then you'll have the end fall off. So all these fuses are gonna get replaced. I'm just gonna go right down the line here. I can check the fuse schedule on the fuse box lid and if these are correct, you know, I can replace one at a time. But what I found, it's a little easier, just pull them all out and then go ahead and use that brass brush. I'm gonna leave that one in here, right here. Look how that's in there, but it isn't seated properly. So whoever put this one in, I'm gonna move this into place, make sure it's seated. What I do when I put these fuses in, I put them in and then I roll them back and forth like that. That seats the tip and it also makes certain that the ends have gone into those two little holes. So I'm gonna leave that red one in place because it's fairly new. And then we'll just go ahead and pull these out. Now trying to get these out by hand, you'll have them flying all over the place, sometimes down in the engine compartment. So you can see how handy it is to use this tool to get all the fuses out quickly and not have them <laughs> fly off in behind the brake booster or worse yet, down inside the engine compartment. So there you have it. My special tool in fast action here. We got one more down here. Okay, now I'll take the brush and I'm just gonna go ahead and clean. You don't need much. I'm gonna look, they're actually pretty clean, so I'm not gonna have to do a lot of brushing. These two down here were number 14 and 16 were a little and notice the, the holder there is a little bent too on number 14, so I'll straighten that out. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think I'm ready to install the new fuses now. So I've set the lid out here to look at the numbering sequence and it goes, you know, one through 16. If you look at the fuse box, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. So I think I'll just do the same sequence as I go down and look at the codes right next to these numbers. Number one is a square, that's an eight amp white fuse. Number two is a red 16 amp fuse and so on. Installing the new fuses with this tool is a one hand operation. I'm going to just set the fuse in like this. I'm gonna put the head of the tool up towards the top of the fuse. You're gonna see why in a second. I'm gonna reach down in here and I'm just gonna tip this in and get the back in the hole like this and then push it back and then let it go. And I'll just take my hand and rotate it a couple times. That helps to seat it in. Number two is a red one. So we'll get the red one ready to go. Set that one in. I'll bring my finger in and just rotate it and bring it right up so the fuse itself is sticking straight up so you can see it. Okay, now I'm gonna come across and finish this. Then we're gonna come back and retest that headlight. You'll have to admit that now the fuse box looks pretty nice. You know, the 116 has places for six spares. Not all fuse boxes have this, but I'm gonna take and put three white ones in here. So these will be nice and handy should you ever have a problem out on the road with the fuse blowing. And I'll just put one blue one here and a couple red ones. Now we have different size fuse kits on my website for the different chassis because every chassis is a little bit different on the number of fuses it takes. But we give you enough fuses so you'll have extras. And you don't need to keep these old ones, okay? <laughs> don't, don't keep these in your glove box for spares. Just throw them away, get rid of them because you'll have enough in the kit to have a few spares in the fuse box if there's space for them and then put the rest of them in your glove box. Okay, it's time to test that right low beam headlight again. Let's turn it on. Oh, look at that. We have a low beam light. Isn't that amazing? How many people would have just run out and bought a new headlight or even if you would have taken into a shop and said replace the headlight, how would they have dealt with this? So now all my lights are working, all the fuses are replaced, but I'm not done yet. There's something else I want to do with a number of the other lights. I'm going to go ahead and change all the other exterior bulbs in the front turn signal and marker lenses, fog lights, and all the bulbs in the rear tail light lens. This car is 38 years old. I have no idea how old these bulbs are. And the other thing is I don't know if the bulb holders are corroded. 
I see this a lot on these old cars. So I'm gonna pull these out one at a time. I'm gonna remove the bulb holders. You can usually inspect the bulb. You know, if you see some blackness around the top of the glass, it probably means it's been used a lot of hours. But once again, these aren't expensive. And all of these can be changed as a preventative measure. So if you're out on the road, you're not gonna have bulbs burning out. We sell this bulb kit on my website, which is a complete selection of bulbs that fit these older Mercedes bins. Now, this is not a complete set. I want to warn you that in case you buy this, you probably need to buy two of these if you wanted to replace all the bulbs, including dash light bulbs. We've got dome light and rear license plate light, trunk lights, and so on. Uh, so this is just kind of an emergency bulb kit. It's not meant to be a complete replacement kit. But I'm going to replace this bulb here. First, I'm going to pull it out, and I'm going to check for corrosion in the holder, and look at this. This is probably one of the cleanest I've ever seen on a 30-plus-year-old Mercedes-Benz. There is no evidence of corrosion. Look at how clean. You still have the cadmium plating on the clips here, and here just shows you what amazing condition old Casper is in here. So if I see corrosion in there, what I'll do is I'll take and use either a brass bottle brush like this and go in there and clean it. Or if the corrosion is really bad, I may have to use stainless steel. You'll see some of these where you'll need to get in there with stainless steel to clean these out so you get good contact, a good ground contact on the side of the bulb itself. But I'm not going to do that. If they don't need cleaning, don't clean them. But I will apply a little bit of dielectric grease. This is silicone dielectric grease. We have this on my website. I'm just gonna take a little swab here and, and wipe a slight film right around here. This will keep moisture out and help to prevent corrosion in the future. Then I'm gonna take the new bulb and I'm just gonna take a little bit of the silicone dielectric grease, just coat around this edge here where it seals on the bottom plate. I'm not gonna coat right over the top of the contact points. All right, let's sit this in here and make sure it's locked in. You know, push it in, twist it, and then make sure it's locked. And now I'll go ahead and push this back in and I can reinstall this marker lens. Okay, I've gotta put the little thumb nut on the back side. And that's an example of how I'm going to attack all the bulbs in Casper. Once again, I recommend you do this for any car that's 20 years or older. Get in there, clean all the bulb contacts, and just replace all those bulbs. Who knows how long it's been since they have been replaced. I should mention that you generally have to be more concerned about the taillight bulb holders than the front turn signal marker lenses. Primarily because on these older than 1985 Mercedes, they use rear window seals that tend to leak and you tend to get moisture down the trunk. And just the moisture residing in the trunk will cause corrosion on these holders. But look at how clean these are. Isn't that amazing? Look at how clean this is on Casper. Once again, extremely nice condition for an old car. But I'll go ahead and change these bulbs anyway. So that completes my lights and fuse inspection, but there's one more thing I wanna share with you in parting. I'm not gonna go over this in this video, but I just wanna give you a little sneak peek on what I intend to do with these headlights here. Even though I just replaced that right low beam headlight, I'm not happy with the original seal beam headlights. I know if I had European headlights, it would be a different matter. But I think one of the best safety upgrades you could make on these older Mercedes Benzes that use these round seal beam headlights is to upgrade to H4 headlights. These are the headlights that have the higher power replaceable bulb like you see here. I've gone ahead and installed just this one, just the low beam. I haven't installed the high beam yet. But right now I'll just go ahead and turn the headlights on and so you can see the difference. There's quite a, a difference in beam. And of course, you're not gonna be able to, to see this in the shop here. Maybe what I'll do, if I have time, I'm not gonna guarantee this, but maybe I'll just install the H4 low and high beams on this side, and then I'll take it out in the dark. And maybe I can shine this up against the wall and let you see the difference in the beam pattern. 
that's where it becomes a big safety issue. Not so much just in how much brightness you have out in front of you, but the beam pattern of the side. This is so you can see deer off the side approaching the road. You get pedestrians and bikers off the side. This is what I consider a big deal when you're driving these old cars. You need better headlights. So I'm going to install H4s in Casper here. I won't cover this in this video. I think I'll save it for another video as I kind of put these together, do some more tests. These are aftermarket. They're different than the original Bosch or, or CB lights, but I'm doing some tests. These came out of Europe. I want to see how well they work, okay? And I'm going to put them on Casper for trial run. So maybe later I can come back with another video that talks about how you install these in your car, what are the differences, and how I feel about them after I've driven the car for a while.